everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today we're taking a look at Osprey Games, a new Joe McCullough publication, The Silver Bayonet, a Napoleonic Gothic horror adventure game. Um, so this is a, uh, it's either a head-to-head, -head, a solo, or a cooperative warband skirmish game where you collect a sort of like supernatural hunters unit from one of six nations during the Napoleonic War. The basic premise, the Harvest Men, which are, you know, supernatural entities that feed on the pain and anger and hatred of humanity, are having an absolute field day during the Napoleonic War, of course, because Europe is tearing itself apart, and unleash and sort of use this growing power um, to ferment sort of like more violence and nightmares amongst all the supernatural horrors of Europe. So what happens is all these nations um, basically have to sort of like um, deal with all of the consequences of this. And so they create these small units, uh, which in England are called silver bayonet units. Uh, it's an award given to the soldiers who face down these kind of like evil monsters. Um, and these specialized units are deployed across Europe to try and stop these threats. They kind of cooperate sometimes, um, but mostly they are vying for their own nation to try and um, sort of survive the war as best they can and will fight to the death to try and find the, the, you know, sort of like the resources and information they need to combat these evils. So I've gone ahead, if you want to get an in-depth look at like the core rules and stuff like that, you can check out my um, GMG review of this rule book right here. What I'm going to do is a let's play right now, so I'm going to slowly go through sort of the first couple turns and play through um, a mission in the in the, the core rulebook, mission one called the investigation. Uh, then over the next couple weeks, there is a solo campaign in here of five missions. I'm going to run my unit, my supernatural hunters unit uh, from Spain through those uh, missions, and then finally, uh, after I've sort of got myself comfortable with the rules, Jay and I are going to do an actual campaign running through the remaining nine core missions from the book. So I'm going to show you the table, show you the two missions I've created for the Let's Play, so we can get an understanding of the rules, and we'll get this underway. So here I am set up and ready to play. I've accumulated everything I need. So I've got my core rule book here. Um, I've got some playing cards. And I usually just need um, five, like a 10 through all the face cards. So um, 10, Jack, King, Queen, Ace, uh, but you might need more. So I've just uh, separated those out. I got some dice. So you need some D10s in different colors. I'll be using the um, blue and red dice as power and skill. So skill and power for all my dice rolls. Uh, then you need a pool of fate dice, so same colored dice, the black however the monster dice, which can be used to alter sort of like in-game states. What I'm doing is I'm just using one of each and I'll turn the face to face how many of those dice I actually have. Tired and exhausted tokens, so these are um, basically for when you're in combat, the first time you fight you become tired, the second time you fight you become exhausted and you're at a penalty and no longer can engage people, um, and that resets every turn. And then just some extra dice for damage from marking when people are wounded. Uh, you can always mark it pen and paper as well. And then finally some smoke clouds for who has shot and a measure engage in inches for when we're firing. You appropriate models. So these are some scenario models I have here. Some terrain, so here we have the back sort of country of Europe during the Napoleonic War. You can see it's fall in this area. An abandoned ruined farmhouse in the middle here, and some clue markers. I've got these cool little 3D printed ones I found, um, but previous I just used buttons that I drew a question mark on. Uh, and then you need some forces. So I've got two groups here I've built. First is my campaign force that I built brand new just for this. This is my Spanish unit um, led by Tinte Ramirez, who is the, uh, the leader there in the middle. Uh, he is armed with a breastplate, a blunderbuss. Um, he's got a shot bag uh, with some silver shot on it. Uh, and then, um, sorry, with some salt, uh, salt, salt shot actually in it. And then a silvered weapon, uh, which is his, uh, his hand weapon there, his sword. Then on the right, we have Inquisitor Rubio. He's a sinister minister, uh, champion of the faith. Um, and then he's got some miracles he can actually cast. His are healing models with an eight, uh, increasing their courage with an eight and blessing their weapons. Now my skills on Ramirez here are um, actually great faith, which means that he uh, always counts as being blessed. So he can, his weapon is always blessed no matter what. Uh, and indefatigable, which means he never gets more than one tire token. He can never be exhausted when fighting, so he just keeps fighting no matter what. Then we have Walkmeister Briner, my supernatural investigator. He's actually my Vatican guard there on the far right in the huge suit of armor, uh, representing his high defense. He's a supernatural veteran and monster expert, which means he actually gives me an extra monster die, and he's the bodyguard there of Inquisitor Rubio sent by the Vatican to uh, to go hunt the bad the bad things. And then Delgado is my um, sapper in the back there. He has a combat engineer skill, a musket and cartridge box, heavy weapon, um, and silver shot for his um, musket. Then down here we've got three uh, just regular grenadiers. You can see with their heavy armor there. 
Uh, they got muskets, cartridge boxes, and um, oil and torches. All of them are able to light up a, a torch there for fighting monsters. Of course, because it's the Spanish Inquisition, we, we had to have the ability to burn things at the stake. Here are my French company here, the French, uh, I guess, Foreign Supernatural Hunting Legion. Uh, it's a Marine unit uh, led by Sergeant Bertrand, Sergeant Bertrand there with his, um, he's got a speed increase for his stats. He's nimble, so he ignores difficult terrain, and he's hard to put down. He gets to reroll dice when using fate dice to uh, try and reduce damage. Then he's armed with a hand weapon, a musket with shot box, cold iron weapon, um, and his extra stuff, he's got oil and torches, and he's also got the um, holy icon. Then we have Philippe Noir, my, my occultist, with his spells. Uh, he can curse people, he can manipulate the dice in the dice pool, uh, and he also can enchant a weapon. He's not to be trusted though, he's got goat legs, you, you don't probably want to hang out with him too much. Uh, and then Seigneur Lacroix, who's my um, junior officer there, he's inspiring, and he has a fencing weapon and two pistols. Finally, we have a marine unit here, five marines, all with cold iron weapons. They're bayonets there, all made from cold iron for hunting um, fey creatures. And they have the steady legs skill and are generally just sort of like the counterparts here to the Grenadiers. Grenadiers are a bit tougher. These guys have steady legs. Uh, these guys took oil and torches. These guys all took cold iron weapons. And that's my unit. So 105 recruitment points spent over here. He had a recruitment increase to get the marine unit there. And then 100 uh, recruiting the Spanish unit. Uh, and of course, we will now have to find ourselves both investigating uh, rumors of a boogeyman dragging uh, farmers away as this this farm has gone quiet and we've been sent to go have a look. All right, so with our units created, it's time to set up the game. So we're gonna use a scenario, and that means first things first, we read the introduction, the investigation. After a night of strange noises coming from beyond the camp, a wizened old man was brought in by the pickets. He told a story of a boogeyman that's attacking isolated houses and farms. Normally this would be written off as the work of bandits, except that whoever is behind it is making off with various parts of the dead. Perhaps it's some foul witch or necromancer collecting supplies, or maybe it's some fey beast. Either way, your unit's been dispatched in no man's land to check it out. So set up, the exact nature of the terrain is kind of unimportant, but there should be a small farm in the middle of the table. Then five clue markers are placed in an X pattern, with the corners being um, eight inches from the center. Once all the clue markers are in place, each player should roll a die. The player who rolls the highest should choose one side of the table and place all their members of their unit within two of that table edge. The other one would be opposite. So uh, we'll have the Spanish roll the red die for a one, and the French roll a three. So the French decide to take the slightly less boggy side of the table, deploying over here. Having picked their side, the French have deployed. Um, we have, of course, Sergeant Bertrand here on the flank with one of his Marines, and then two more Marines uh, guarding slash escorting Philippe Noir. Uh, you know, not really to be trusted the occultist as he goes to look at the, the results of the massacre at the farm. Then down here, we have Signor Lacroix with the last two Marines in a flanking maneuver. Spanish also taking to the side. We have um, our sergeant here, Ramirez, uh, Sertiente Ramirez, uh, in the middle with one of his um, uh, grenadiers. And then the flank, the sapper, Delgado, is uh, taking a second one of the grenadiers. Then uh, escorting uh, the sort of like Vatican staff here, we have the third grenadier um, with Inquisitor Rubio and um, the Wachtmeister Breiner. So set up, we have to determine the fate pool, um, and this will be the uh, Spanish side, this will be the French side. So everyone starts with two power, sorry, two skill, two power, and one monster die. Uh, with the monster hunter here, this is a Vatican guard, of course, Wachmeister Briner, uh, we have an extra monster die for the Spanish. These can be spent to re-roll, so you can reduce your die of a given type when you make a test to re-roll, right? So if you wanted to make an initiative test, uh, if I didn't like this power result, I could spend one of my power dice to re-roll it. For our five cards required for the mission, uh, which is the 10 through Ace of Diamonds, um, and that's going to be our encounter deck for, or not our encounter deck, our um, clue deck. Now, the team starts the first turn with an initiative check on both sides. So both would make a normal test and see what the result is. So for um, Ramirez, he gets a total of 10. Uh, and then for um, the, uh, the Spanish, I'm sorry, the, um, the French, they get a total of 13. Either side had rolled a snake eye, so a, a two or a double 10, which is a 20, there would be a special result, uh, which would ca cause you like an unexpected event, um, or also a uh, sort of a, a big bonus. The um, unexpected encounter table, if you roll double twos for your, or double ones for your initial check, um, then the turn is slightly altered instead of following the normal phase order. Uh, the uh, turn is, um, the monster phase uh, occurs second and the primary player phase occurs third. So basically you would have um, 
uh, like a, an extra monster sort of like initiative. In the rare instance where you get to tw uh, uh, where multiple players roll a 20 or a 2, all the special results go into effect. If you roll a 20, uh, the player should immediately add a power dice or a skill dice to their fate pool. In addition, the player should make a roll in the unexpected event table. The 20s get you extra power or skill dice. 2s get you extra um, uh, monster dice uh, to their fate pool. And then both result in an unexpected event. Which means the monsters get a jump on everybody. Uh, so, let's see what our, our decision is here. We have the primary player currently being the French. And that means that after the initiative check, we go to primary player phase one. So the French have eight models, which means they must activate four of them. Then any monster on the table would happen. Then the secondary player would activate all their models. And then the primary player would be able to reserve and activate four more. We're activating. So every model can make a move action plus an additional action. And that could be to shoot, reload, investigate, or for instance, also sprint. Now sprint is like an additional move. We have to make a test to do so uh, based on movement. You get two extra, of, uh, two extra inches of movement if you're total is 10 or less and four if it is um, 11 or more. So sending his flankers out first, I believe the junior officer, always gung-ho, senior Lacroix will make a move action. Going six. He's only armed with a pistol that uh, does not shoot very far. He's going to sprint. So he has a movement of six. He gets a total of 16 plus six is 22. So he gets to move an additional four inches and he'll run up to here. It's only shooting 24. The Marines will begin to move. Also going six, and then sprinting. Five plus five plus six less. Uh, so he actually doesn't add his move. It's not a move test, it's just a sprint check. Didn't get a 10 or higher, so then moves two inches. And last but not least, the final Marine will go. Ah, uh, you know what, we'll leave him for reserve, actually. We will send the boss. Now he is moving seven and also nimble, so he can move through this difficult terrain without having to do any additional finagling. So he's gonna pick up to here, I think, try and get on this clue marker. Might get within one inch of it, so he'll make a sprint check and get a 10, so he'll only go two inches. That's enough to get him next to the clue marker for next turn. And then his buddy will come with him. Now he'll be slowed, so he's gonna go three to the edge here and then be slowed by an inch, he'll only get two more extra inches of movement. Getting him behind the rock. Also make a sprint check and get a nine. He'll only move two inches, but just come up behind the boss. Half their figures having activated, it's the monster phase. There's no loose monsters on the table here. So it goes over to the Spanish and they get to do everything. We'll start with Inquisitor Rubio. He's gonna walk his six. He's not super fast, but he'll come around the corner here. And then he's going to bless uh, his Vatican guard here, Wachtmeister Briner. Um, and he has a TN of, using his courage of plus three, has to do a TN 10 test. That's a 21, so he passes. It means that Briner's uh, broadsword here is now totally blessed for the rest of the game. Briner himself will walk his six, and then he'll make a sprint check, as he only has a pistol. Well, that'll definitely be a big sprint, so he'll go four, up around the corner. Stop this grenadier, I think he's just gonna take a walk, going six. And because these guys moved up, he will take a shot into the junior officer. His defense is a 14, and he's gonna be making a shoot test at plus one. So rolling two dice, he adds them together. That's a nine, uh, and with his plus one, that's only a 10. So not necessarily gonna be a hit, he needs a 14. He's gonna spend a power die from the pool to re-roll this power dice. And that'll give him a 11, a 12, and still miss. We'll play some smoke to show that he's fired. To reload to get rid of that. So then we go over to here, the other grenadier. Walking his six up to the fence. He'll make a sprint check to try and move over top. Get a seven, so just be able to hop over basically, and that's it. And the boss, also going his six. We'll take a jump and go with an 11. So he gets to go four inches, so two to get him across. And then he can still move two more. He'll just go stand next to the bushes. Well, the sapper is going to go. Now, unfortunately, he will be quite slowed. He's only going three through this muck here. And making a sprint check with a 14, he gets to move two more because his uh, total move of four gets halved yet again for going through difficult terrain. His compatriot also moving three through difficult ground. And then a sprint check as well. With a seven, he only moves one more inch. Now the primary player gets their second phase, and that means we can start moving up again. So moving three with the Marine, he'll basically require two more to cross and then have one more extra inch of movement. And then check for sprinting. 
That's only two more inches. So I'll just go over here and start moving into the building. Philippe Noir is gonna walk his three and then hop over for two and then move one more. And then maybe he can sprint over to this clue. That's only a seven. So he's only gonna go two more inches and not quite get there. The Lost Marine moves two to the edge. It's gonna cost him four to get to the top of this because of difficult ground. And then he can try and sprint to the high ground. That's an 11, so he can move two inches through the woods, even though it's difficult. And this last Marine moving up six, he will take a pot shot at the Grenadier that just shot at them. So he's going to be on a TN of 14 over here. Um, and he'll be minus one to his roll for having already moved and then plus one for his shoot value. That is a 16, oh geez, okay, so 16, uh, minus one is a 15, um, plus one for his uh, shoot stat is again a 16, that's gonna hit. Now the power dice is what does damage with the musket. Oh, sorry, actually, yeah, I think the skill dice. Uh, bam, that's a skill die of nine, which means it does nine damage. So he has two remaining. That's what happens when you lie in wait. So now his options are to return fire, do nothing, or dive for cover. His musket's unloaded, so he's gonna dive for cover two inches over this way. I totally forgot he could do. He couldn't fire back because his pistol's out of range, but he could also die for cover when he got shot up by the Grenadier. Critical hit rule here, where you roll um, two tenths on your skill check for a shooting attack or a melee attack, you get plus two damage, and they can't uh, shoot back, dive for cover, or strike back or fall back in melee. That wraps up the turn, so we're gonna turn two, and that means a new initiative check. For the Spanish, a 15 for the French, a nine. Roll a 10 to, to re-roll there, so the French just deciding discretion's a better part of valor and letting the Spanish have it. Well, it's looking like it's time to start investigating, so I think we're gonna go with the boss, as he only has a blunderbuss. He's gonna make a move action over to here, and then he's gonna investigate that investigation token and get the Jack of Diamonds. A mutilated corpse, the figure that investigated the clue must make a courage check at TN10 or suffer minus one melee and minus one shoot for the rest of the scenario. So we find one of the, the locals who is, uh, I guess, stuffed in one of those barrels. Luckily, he is indefatigable and has great faith, so courage three. That's a 13, he's fine. Also seen more terrible things than this. Uh, so he can do, it's rounding down, I believe he has to activate. Two more models can activate. I think you just need to reload. Sacrificing your movement, and then take a shot at this guy while he's reloaded, or unloaded. Firing his musket into the unloaded Marine. Uh, he has not made a move. There is no wounded penalties in this game. Uh, so he is plus one shoot value, looking for, I believe, a 13 for the Marines. That's a 14, that'll do it. And it's a skill dice damage, so seven points of damage. He has 10, so that leaves him with three. Now he will dive for cover behind his friend. Going two inches. And these guys get one more activation. I think we're gonna go with the Inquisitor. So you fired again, so you get a smoke. Uh, he is going to walk his six, trying to get behind these trees, get in some cover, and he's going to heal this poor fool. TN10, he's got plus three. He does it, so he heals him three points, and brings him back up to five health. Inquisitor, uh, but that means all the French get to go now. Start with some investigation because it might go poorly otherwise. I think this Grenadier or this Marine is just going to walk over to this token and see what's up. What did we find here, Marine? Tactical, the 10. Uh, the 10 of diamonds is severed partially gnawed limbs. The figure that investigates this clue must make a courage check at minus 10. Uh, or TN10 or suffer minus one melee and shoot for the rest of the scenario. So he's courage plus one. So let's see what he gets. A nine, oh no, so he's minus one to all his stats for the rest of the scenario. We're gonna place a little red token on him to show that he is scared. The junior officer's gonna go. He's gonna run his six up to here. Charge light brigade, try to finish off this grenadier. Firing his pistol, he is shoot plus one. Defense 14 on the grenadier. He moved though, so effectively defense 15. That's a six. He will spend, oh, I'd have to roll a 10 to do it. He's plus one shoot but it would basically need to be a nine or a 10 on the reroll, so he's just gonna let it be. This Marine will do the same. He's in cover because of the slope of the hill, so it doesn't really make any difference if he moves first or not. So he'll move first, get him out of cover. And then defense 14 again, 15 effectively because of the move. That's an 11. He's gonna spend that reroll. Spend a fate die, down to one power die, and reroll the power here. That's a nice high skill hit of, it'll kill him if it hits. 
That's a 12 though. 13 for his shoot, back down to 12, doesn't hit. He's now also fired his musket. Well, I think it's just this last poor Marine. He's gonna walk up six to the corner and reload his musket. Well, this Marine is gonna come through the woods a bit more, going three to here, and then take a shot at the boss. Plus one with his musket, it is minus one for cover, and then minus one for him having moved, so minus two, plus one for his shoot value. So it effectively makes him defense 15. Ooh, that's a 14. 13 though, not gonna bother with the reroll. Let's build duck for cover though, and go two inches. Remember to here. Oh, as will he actually, because he got shot at. I forgot about that. I'll dive for cover up this way. We're gonna let the boss actually do some work, and we'll walk over with this Marine, investigate the token, and what do we find? It's the Queen of Diamonds which is Strange Claw Marks. The player that uncovered this clue shot a monster die to the fate pool. So the French get an additional monster die. Well, and then it's uh, Sergeant Bertrand. He's nimble, so you can ignore the difficult movement penalties here. He's gonna go three, six. Almost be in the center here. But he's gonna fire his musket into Ramirez. Plus two, uh, minus one for cover, minus one for the move. So just effectively rolling a straight die roll here. That's a 16, that'll do it. That's nine damage as well, oh geez. Well, he's got armor one for his breastplate. Let's get to ignore armor anyway. So I think he's gonna have to spend a skill die to reduce the damage. He'll take nine minus four, so five damage. It's just Philippe Noir left. He is going to take a walk three and then two around here and cast a curse. You know what, he's actually gonna manipulate. He's gonna walk around to the edge of this and he's gonna manipulate the dice pool on a 10. Uh, plus three, so that's a 10. In order to change one of the monster dice into a power dice and replenish the pool. Take that free bonus dice and turn it into something. Else. Oh, you could have for cover as well, two inches, couldn't you? And you will, just move over to here. And by cover, I mean menace. Well, it is back to the Spanish. Um, we're gonna start, I think, with you. This grenadier is gonna line up over here and take a shot into their boss. Last one for cover, minus one for moving. He is defense 14, meaning we effectively need a 15 with the plus one for their shoot stat. Ooh, that's an eight. I think it's worth the reroll. Going to zero skill dice for the uh, Spanish. And getting a 10, oh geez, and it's a skill shot, 10 points of damage. Dropping a power die that was conveniently changed over by Philippe Noir to roll two dice, pick the highest for damage reduction because he is hard to put down. Uh, 10 damage goes down to three. Nine health left. Lost the Grenadiers. Uh, it's gonna be five inches because he's gotta just clear that woods, but it will bring him in contact with the marker. And then he'll investigate it. What do we find? The Ace of Diamonds, it's... A hobgoblin! The players have uncovered this clue. Should place a hobgoblin anywhere on the table within six of the center point. Well, guess what was in the well, French team? A twisted man, twisted by magic into uh, something terrible. Deal with that. <laughs> it's just the last ground here. He'll be going three out of here, and I think he's gonna take a shot at this Marine. Skill test, he moved. He's obscured, so minus two plus one, minus one overall. 13 goes to 14 to hit. That'll do it, 15, only five points of damage though. Take him down to five, and he can fire back, which he will do. Didn't move, uh, not obscured, so just hit on 14. That's a nine, that'll miss. He could reroll this, he'd need a nine on the power die, and it wouldn't increase the damage, so he won't. And it's just Bryna left. Bryna's going to charge. Hello, little officer. So he has to fight first, defense 13 on the officer. Brian is fight plus two, or melee plus two. Uh, so he's rolling with his great weapon. Oh geez, power die did not do well. But he's gonna reroll it by spending the last of the power dice in the fate pool. And get a 10, that's only a 12 though, so he misses. Both models become tired. And the officer can now fight back. So uh, that's going to be Sergeant, uh, sorry, Signor Lacroix. He's gonna fight back at melee plus two. And get a holy moly with his fencing weapon, a 16, 17, 18, which definitely hits. Now it is a skill-based weapon. 
Uh, and we have no dice to reduce the damage, so that's going to be eight points of damage on uh, Vakmeister Brenner. He's got four left because he missed that swing. It's activated. The monster won't go until next turn, so it is a round three initiative. The fatigue tokens come off. Sorry, these are both exhausted now, actually, because they fought again. So they actually have different colored tokens. It's initiative checks for the Spanish, a five for the French, a four. Worth the reroll, I think. Rerolling the power die. Oh, I'm getting another one. It means the Spanish have the lead. So I think we go with uh, there's be three models activating. So because it's half, so that will be. The Inquisitor, I think, is going to move to here and then heal Bryna on a 10 plus. Uh, it's a 9 plus his will, so it's a 12, or plus his courage rather. So he'll be healed from 4 up to 7. Then we're gonna go over here, we're gonna reload this musket and then take a shot over here. You can reload to shoot back. So plus one, minus one for being obscured, but didn't move. So just a straight dice roll, trying to get a 13. That's it, that's nine points of damage. Uh, and that will take him down to one. Can't fire back, so he'll duck for cover. Come on, two inches this way. He has now fired. One model left to go. Oh, do you fire your blunderbuss? I think you do. So hobgoblins are melee plus two, defense 14, courage five, health 14. Uh, indefatigable, they have damage reduction and they're strong. Because both these targets are in range, they can both be targeted by the blast of the blunderbuss. Um, so let's roll first against the boss there. Minus one to hit, but he shoot plus two. So it's plus two, minus one for cover, minus one for uh, being a blunderbuss. And that's a... 11, doesn't hit. Against the Hobgoblin, that'll do it, 16. Power dice plus one, so 11 points of damage. Back down to 10 though, um, because he uh, has damage reduction. It's the monster phase, and following the script, of course, this monster is going to go towards the nearest thing it can see, which is going to be poor, 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 um, <laughs> Sergeant Bertrand, and he's gonna get attacked. Plus two against his death of 14. Let's see if it whacks him with that great weapon. Oh, it sure does. So power eight plus the damage bonus for open of, of one, so nine. Strong, so that's 10 damage. He's only got nine left. He'll have to spend one of these skill dice to try and reduce it. So two pick the highest. He's taking 11 points of damage. Or sorry, 10 points of damage. He reduces it by eight, only takes two. So he's down to seven because he's hard to put down. So he can fight back if he wants. They're both going to be tired. But the uh, hobgoblin never becomes exhausted. So fighting back, he is fight plus two. Uh, that is a grand total of 12. Plus two for his fight makes it the 14. Uh, it's a hand weapon, so seven points of damage using the power die. He's only got four left, reduces it to six, but he slays the hobgoblin that attacks him. He does, however, become exhausted. He just keeps one fatigue because he gains at the end of the whole combat, but now he's minus one to his stats. Defense and melee. Oh, geez. Well, uh, it is the French turn now because the monsters have gone. So I think we're gonna see some combat happen over here. Junior officer's gonna activate. He's gonna take a stab against the death of 14 on uh, Bryna there. That's a nine, 10, 11. One skill die, so he'll use it for the reroll. And that's a 13, 14, 15 will do. Fencing weapons of seven points of damage is gonna take Bryna out. In his second action, he will reload. And spend your move action to do that. So now over here, we've reloaded. And over here, we haven't, but we can't see anybody. So I think with only one hit point left, he's gonna reload and then move his six around the tree here, threatening the Inquisitor. And then our last Marine, although injured, is gonna come out and take a shot. Shooting this Grenadier. Uh, he is minus one for moving, minus one for the obstruction. So, and then plus one, so minus one overall. Looking for a 14. That won't do it. Scaredy Cat Marine's gonna come out to here. Try and save the boss. He'll shoot the Inquisitor in the back with his musket. Uh, not obscured, because he's on the other side of the woods here, uh, but he is minus one for having moved. So just a straight dice roll, looking for a 13. 14 will do it, uh, and that's seven points of damage on the Inquisitor. He's only got 10, 12 health. 10 health, he's got three left. He's now fired. Philippe Noir's gonna go. He's just gonna, I think, peek around the corner over here. 
and then try and manipulate the dice pool again. He needs a seven to do it with his plus three, gets it. So he's gonna turn this last monster die back into a skill die. The boss is gonna go. Uh, he's gonna take a shot, I think, into Ramirez. Loading his musket, he'll just fire away. The only last one to defense and um, to uh, his melee stat, not minus one shoot. So he's plus two, minus one overall for cover. And that makes him looking for a 14. Ooh, that's not great. Can't reroll the power die because he only has skill dice rerolls. We'll have him having fired again. Reloading over here, this grenadier is gonna take a shot into, or sorry, the marine's gonna take a shot into the grenadier. Uh, plus one for having a uh, shoot of one. That's a 10, he can reroll the skill die. Uh, that's a uh, 12 goes to 13, so he just misses. He can't shoot back, but he could dive for cover too. And he will. It's just this fellow up here left. He's going to reload. Just move three inches. Across that difficult train, having his movement. So with Briner down, it's back over to the Spanish. They only have a couple of models left to activate, but I think we're gonna start over here. This Grenadier is going to reload uh, and then take a shot into, uh, I think, Sergeant Bertrand. Uh, or you could shoot this guy in the open, which is probably even a better idea. <laughs> ah, or the guy who's like super injured. Mm, Cause just one point will kill him. Yeah, I'll shoot the super injured guy. So cover, plus one, minus one, just looking for a 13. Uh, that's only a four, it'll miss. The sapper's gonna go, he's gonna climb up, climb, scaling the wall for all of his movement, and he's gonna take a shot, I think, over here. Cover plus move, so minus two, plus one for his shoot value. Looking for a Seth. Uh, big old 14, that misses. That's gonna be a minus one overall, so 12 goes to 11. And last but not least, this grenade is gonna reload, try and finish him off. He should have a smoke, actually, because he did fire this activation. Uh, and that's an 11 goes to 12, just misses. And I think that's round. Turn four, initiative check for the Spanish. That's gonna be a five, and for the French, it's gonna be a 12. So the French going first. This fellow, I think, is gonna just jump in and fight Ramirez with his bayonet. Uh, he is melee plus one with his hand weapon, looking for a 13, that's an 11, 12. A miss. Now, the Inquisitor could fight back with his staff, and he will. Plus zero, needs a 13 to hit that guy. Uh, misses. Become tired. Three more models remain to move. Moving on up. This guy's unloaded. So getting him in the open. He will fire his pistol. Uh, that is a 11, it goes to 12, goes back down to 11, and misses. Two models remaining to move. They need to finish some stuff off. This fellow's gonna just charge in, I think. Go fight this Grenadier. He's minus one to his stats, but he might as well try. Needs a 14, misses. He can fight back though at plus one. Needing a 13, he might as well try. And get a 12, goes to 13. That's gonna be six points of damage. I'm right on four and they both become tired. One model left to go. It's gonna be the boss here. He's no longer tired. I think he's just gonna reload and then take a shot into Ramirez. He is shoot plus two, minus one for the cover, so plus one, looking for a 14, totally misses, does no, no ability to reroll. And that's the first half of the French activation done, so it's just this model, this model, this model, and this model left. It's on the board, so the Spanish get to go, reloading up here. My sapper, uh, his name is Delgado, is gonna shoot at uh, Ramirez, who is bold enough to fire, at plus one, minus one. Oh, just a 10, doesn't quite hit. The second Grenadier on the flank here is gonna reload and take a shot into the unloaded Marine. So minus one for cover, plus one for his shoot. He needs a 13. Six and six, plus one, uh, plus nothing actually, it means it's just a 12. Dive for cover, heading backwards, just behind here. Also dive for cover, getting in a line of sight. And he got shot. The Inquisitor's gonna activate. He's gonna take a stab into that remaining marine. That's a 15, that'll definitely do it. Bops him on the head and takes him out of action with his hand weapon. Second action, I think it's time to go, folks. We've killed the Hobgoblin. And you know what, we'll go around this way. Time to head back towards our table edge. This is gonna reload, he's gonna actually shoot the marine. Minus one for the cover in the intervening terrain, but plus one for his shoot, so just looking for a 13. That'll do it. That's four points of damage, enough to take him out. And then this grenadier is going to activate, and I think just bayonet this guy. Well, so he's tired, so on zeros, he needs a 13 to hit him. Well, that's a 16, eight points of damage. 
just crushes him. And then his second scale, he's just gonna start falling back, going six. But he is exhausted. And it's just the boss. He has decided discretion is a better part of Valor. He's gonna move back his six, going to here, and then make a sprint move. Uh, looking for a 10 or 11. That's a nine, so he's only going two inches, so he just tucks in over here behind the woods. And the remaining French get to go, also deciding discretion being a better part of Valor. They will, ah, you know what, the boss is gonna move and he's gonna investigate. Everyone's falling back, so let's see what the final card was. King of Diamonds. Strange Footprints, add a monster dice to the Fate Pool. Sweet. Well, that means that Philip Knock and Go, he can walk six back towards the table edge and then manipulate on a seven. Gets it, so that turns into a skill die. And that should give us the advantage. So we can walk up here with this Marine, and he'll take a shot into Ramirez. No cover, but he moved. He needs a 14, plus one, minus one, so just has to hard roll it. Oh, oh, that'll do. How about 10 damage? Ramirez is down. No dice for damage reduction, because it has to be a skill die or a power die, and there's none left. Marine's now fired. Just a reload over here, but he'll immediately fire again. Try and drop that Grenadier. Uh, obstructions not in the way this time, so just plus one, needs a 14, that's a 15, uh, so that'll do it, and four points of damage. He can't fire back, but he could duck for cover, which he'll do, just going sideways and back. He's got six left. Round five, things are getting sporty, initiative roll, over here it's going to be a fifth, 13, and then for the French, that's a nine. Time to go, no one wants to die, going to go six. Put this Grenadier. And then he's going to sprint and get off the table. The Inquisitor's gonna do much the same thing. Moving six to here. And then he's also gonna try and sprint. Be like, deuces. Nope, only goes two. He might still die. Grenadier, two plus, so he gets to the other side, and then three more, four more, we'll put him here. Falling back. Goes for the sprint and gets it. He gets to leave. And that was three models. She can go, not in range to pistol. He'll reload. And as the, there's no sense running now because we're just trying to catch these guys before they go. My sapper, uh, sorry, no, he's not done. It's the boss over here. He'll reload. And then take a shot, I guess, with his rifle or his musket up into the side. two. My one for obscured, no hit. Uh, over here, reloads and fires again into the sapper. Looking for a 14, 13 plus one. That's a 14, 10 points of damage. How much health does he have? The only 10 just aces him with no dice in the fate pool to try and reduce it. He'll reload and not have anyone to shoot at. So he's just going to back up with Philip Noir, I think. And the remaining right here, uh, he'll just go six to here and reload. Turn five initiative. Uh, for the uh, Spanish, it's five. Oh, the French are going first, which means half the models. There's one, two, three, four remaining. You'll jump on here. Stab the Inquisitor to death, plus two. Oh man, that's uh, fencing weapons. So that's gonna be seven points of damage. Takes him down. One more model can go, so you can just reload and take a shot into this uh, Grenadier, who's also reloaded, however, so he can fire back. You get a 14, uh, even with the obstruction, minus one, it's still a hit, and that's gonna be seven points of damage, takes him down. Spanish, Spanish, driven from the field, the French are victorious and hold it at the end, uh, and manage to slay the Hobgoblin. So we start off with campaign rolls, checking for injury or death. So Philippe Noir, three of the Marines, and the junior officer, Sorry, the junior officer and um, Sergeant Bertrand all made it through. It means three Marines need to be checked for death. So they're all the same. It's a D10 roll. Bam. Uh, it's three, three, nine, two to three permanent injuries. And then nine is going to be a flush wound. So one survives just fine, goes back into the pool. Two. Now between games, you can just fire and rehire people. So don't give them any experience and they don't get permanent injuries. Or we can roll to see what their permanent injuries are. Uh, the first one, four, arm wound, minus one melee. The second one, five, 
Shakes, minus one shoot. Yeah, you're both fired. Two of them get no experience this game. Now, luckily, fate dice can be used to reroll this. Any fate dice. Sorry, just power and skill dice. Oh, no. Well, let's see how it goes. So for the boss, Ramirez, that's a six. He's totally fine. For the sapper, dead. Uh, for the uh, Inquisitor, Ramos, seven. He's totally fine. Reiner, one, also dead. Reiner's going to have to get rehired. Finally, one of the Grenadiers was killed. Three, he's permanently injured, so might as well also be dead. What that means is these four models effectively survive to gain experience. Just get rehired with no experience points at the start of the next game. Goes to the back and he's like, get me another one. This one failed. Got good experience. All right, so experience. As your figures go through the campaign, they earn experience points. After rolling, uh, any figure that's still alive is immediately given one experience point for participating in the scenario. In addition, each scenario features additional ways to earn experience points, capped at a maximum of three. So for the French, Plus one experience points if the unit uncovers the clue that reveals the hobgoblin. So a bonus experience is going to go to the Spanish for that. Uh, plus two if the unit investigates two or more clue markers. Both sides did. So that takes them to three and them at two. Uh, plus two for killing the hobgoblin puts them at four. And then plus two experience points if a unit inflicts three or more casualties in the opposing unit, which both did. So that'll put them at six and them at five. So everyone gets one and then five bonus experience that they hand out, but each one can only be assigned a single one. So everyone's gonna have two experience here and because there's six bonus experience, one plus one for each of them is six as well. So both units, uh, the survivors go to two experience each. Ramirez, uh, Ramos, uh, Sans and Rubio all get two experience points over the course of this game. And as they go back to their encampment, they request reinforcements in the form of another Grenadier. Delgado's twin Belgado and Briner two Electric Boogaloo. So it takes at least five to gain a courage and become tier one. So everyone's still tier zero until they hit five experience. Then we can research if we wanted to and reorganize and re-equip. So because we had dead models, we re-equip and we can um, hire in to replace our casualties and then calculate our unit's power rank. It's equal to the number of tiers in the unit of which we're all still at zero. So both units basically go to full as they reorganize and re-equip. There's no treasure to be found or super magic stuff except inside the scenarios, which means that we are ready for our next game. Means that uh, we're gonna go on an adventure. The Inquisitor will once again lead this unit into the forest, this time following a trail of clues uh, that they discovered here in this farmhouse. So there you go, our first look at the Silver Bayonet, running through the competitive way of playing the game with the first mission, The Investigation. I will be on to, uh, in two weeks, running through the solo mode for this. You can see that as well, as I run the um, narrative-linked missions, and, and the game turns into more of an adventure game. So we've seen the competitive play, we'll check out the adventure game mode, uh, and then we'll run a competitive campaign between my and Jay's warband. So uh, in two weeks, we'll be able to kick off the solo campaign with the Wolf Pack, as we delve deeper into the woods uh, of war-torn Europe and see what's up supernaturally speaking out there in the forest big thanks for watching we'll see you for more let's plays in the future it's on a mash hey there i hope you enjoyed that video there are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos i guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Desperate Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching. It really does help out, and happy gaming.